To the latest on the status of American Paul Whelan, who has been wrongfully detained in Russia for nearly four years. He's serving a 16-year sentence on espionage charges. There have been reports Paul has been missing scheduled phone calls, and Russian authorities apparently have transferred him to a prison hospital. Joining us now for more is Paul's brother, David. David, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Walk us through the very latest information you have about your brother's condition and his whereabouts. Well, we thought he was actually doing pretty well. He had been visited by U.S. Embassy staff uh, a week ago uh, on Wednesday, and um, he had had phone calls with their parents since then. He, they, they said he looked healthy. He seemed fine. Uh, and then his phone calls stopped. His last phone call was the day before Thanksgiving, and uh, Paul has over the last uh, three years, almost four, uh, four years in uh, Russian custody, uh, been pretty good about communicating on holidays, about holidays. Uh, so it was very strange for him to miss Thanksgiving um, and it was, it was bizarre that he missed uh, our father's birthday, which was today. Uh, Dad is turning 85, and Paul would never have skipped a phone call if he was able to make it. So we're obviously concerned that uh, no, Paul doesn't seem to be where he's supposed to be, which is in uh, IK-17, a labor camp in Mordovia. The prison says that they've moved him to a hospital camp, but they said that he moved uh, at a time last week where Paul would have been able to tell us that he'd been moved, and Paul didn't tell us. So. We're concerned that the prison camp isn't being upfront about what is actually happening to Paul and where he is. When you have spoken to him, what has his uh, demeanor been like? Well, I think it goes up and down. Uh, obviously, when he hears things uh, such as the uh, White House's offer of concessions to the Russian government that might see him freed, he's he's elated. He's very happy. Uh, but frankly, you know, day to day, uh, things go by and, and it's not a great place to be. I think he uh, he struggles sometimes to keep that morale up. Uh, and these phone calls are are critical. They're his lifeline to our family, to uh, a future hope of a normal life. And so who knows what he's going through right now, uh, being cut off from that. A White House spokesperson said this morning they are deeply concerned about the lack of information and lack of contact with Paul. What are you hearing directly from the White House? Uh, we're hearing the same thing you are, really, uh, which is that uh, they are um, attempting to find out where Paul is. Uh, obviously, when you are put in a prison, you're in someone else's custody, and in this case, you're in the custody of the Russian government. Uh, it's very difficult to get the Russian government to tell you the truth about what's going on uh, unless they want to. And so uh, hopefully the White House will be able to do more than our family could. Uh, we've reached out to the prison monitors in Mordovia to see if they will help us to find out where Paul is. Um, it would just be nice to have someone be able to confirm what's uh, happened to Paul. Earlier in the summer, David, I have to share, I was with uh, Trevor Reed's family when they were waiting for him to come home. He was being released from Russia and was getting checked out at a hospital there in Texas. And obviously they were ecstatic, uh, but they were also concerned about Paul and Brittany and, and all the others that are still being detained in Russia. What was going through your mind during that time when you saw Trevor Reed released? Well, it's sort of like seeing someone get a lottery ticket. You're really thrilled for them. Uh, but then the moment passes and you've got to get back to work. And so that's really what we did. Uh, I was so happy for the, the Reeds, for Trevor to be home. Um, but the very next day, it was back to work supporting Paul and, and making sure that he's taken care of. And and one of the things that is important is, is to know where he is and to be able to communicate with him and to have him communicate with us to let us know if he is struggling with money on his phone card or abuse by prison guards or human rights violations or being transferred to places that he wasn't expected to be, uh, be transferred to. Right. Now, the Biden administration, they say they're working to secure the release of your brother and WNBA star Brittany Griner. Do you have confidence that President Biden and his team will ultimately do enough to get your brother and, and Griner back home? I think uh, President Biden has done everything he can do at this point. Um, it may be a matter of uh, making some smaller decisions, but he has made substantial concessions to the Russian government, and the Russian government has essentially ignored uh, those concessions, or they have offered or requested things from the U.S. government that the U.S. government can't give them, which is, is it, it, it's bad faith. And so, unfortunately, uh, you know, we're in that pickle that hostage families get into, which is that the government that is supposed to protect your uh, your uh, rights has done what they can, and, and now we have to wait to see if the hostage taker will uh, will respond. And as you all know, Paul's been detained for more than a thousand days now. And as you mentioned earlier, your dad just had a birthday. We're getting into the holidays. Describe for us the emotional toll this is taking on you and your family. It's hard. I think uh, birthdays, uh, holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas, they're 
they're fundamental to uh, probably every family who celebrates holidays. Uh, you have uh, rem uh, memories of um, having spent those holidays, those special days with Paul, um, with your special family member. And, and to not have them uh, is al always difficult. I mean, sometimes people can't make it back home for holidays. Um, but to know that he's in this sort of condition, or in fact, in a condition that we don't know, um, is exceptionally hard. It's really hard for my parents. Uh, frankly, my dad had his 85th birthday uh, this year and probably doesn't have very many more. It would be nice for him to be able to speak to his son. Absolutely. Well, David, please keep us posted. Thank you again for joining us tonight. We are thinking of you and your family and really hope for Paul's quick return home. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.